lives of people of differing views. And, and we seem incapable these days of having people on both sides of the aisle find common ground. And I know it's, it's almost a dirty word on the left and on the right to compromise and to find common ground. But that's the only way things will get done. The, the, the great achievements in American um, uh, uh, legislation, for instance, the Civil Rights Act, Lyndon Baines Johnson uh, uh, pushing through the Civil Rights Act, how did that happen? It, Lyndon Baines Johnson was able to get Republicans to move a little and take, he got Everett Dirksen to get some of the credit for the Civil Rights Act, so he got the Republicans on board. But ha the harder job he had was getting his own party on board. And he went to task battling his own party. You need a leader. Getting things done in Washington is not just getting the other side of the aisle to do things, it's to get your own party to move. And we need to have individuals who have shown the capacity to get other people to move to common ground. And, uh, and we're missing that now, in my own view. I, I don't mean to be too partisan, but I did run against President Obama, so I'm allowed to be somewhat partisan. He hasn't been an effective leader. He hasn't been able to get his own party to get the job done or to get the Republican Party to move with him. He's been campaigning all the time and attacking. You can't attack and get things done. You can't attack other people and expect them to come along. I, I remember I, when I was, I got elected governor of Massachusetts. One of the things that led me to think I might be a fair president was I was elected in a state where my legislature was overwhelmingly Democrat. 13% of my legislature was Republican. Think about that, 87% Democrat. Now you know that to uphold a veto, <laughs> you know, you need at least a third. I didn't have a third, I had 13%. So my vetoes were, were irrelevant. So. I had to recognize that to get anything done, I had to work with the opposition party. And to get anything done, I couldn't attack them. I was in office for six months, and I never attacked the, the leader of the Democratic Party, the, the Speaker of the House and the Senate President. And I got a note from one of the two of them who said, I've noticed you've never attacked me in six months. I'm gonna stop attacking you. And, and we, and we got together every Monday for a couple of hours. We traded offices. We went to one of the three of our offices and talked about the challenges the state faced. It never leaked out what we talked about. We found common ground here and there. Our education system is now ranked number one in the nation. We, as you know, we got health insurance for all the citizens of our, of our state. We, did, we got things done. And uh, I mean, you've got to look around for people in your respective states that are getting things done, and they will get that done by finding common ground. If they're not willing to find common ground, they may make you feel better, but they will get nothing done. Thank you. Um, so you've talked a little bit about uh, your leadership style, other leaders. Who have been your mentors, or who have mentored you along the way? What have they taught you? Um, well, you know, I think the uh, the mentors that that uh, that I follow fall in two groups, and and one uh, are are individuals that that have touched my life, and my my dad and my mom would be first in that regard. My dad was born in Mexico, American parents living in Mexico at the time. He was born there for a U.S. citizen, ran for president, by the way. But he was born a U.S. citizen in Mexico, um, and uh, and then there was a revolution in Mexico, and they were forced to leave, and uh, and he came to El Paso, lived on public assistance, uh, and was poor. His dad moved from El Paso.